Great. All right. Uh, hello, hello, everybody. And welcome to this special edition of uh, the Musings program, the Musings part of the Musings and Music program. I am delighted to have with me today a daughter. It's not like just daughter vaguely. She really is my daughter because her mother was just a year behind me in uh, Sikh Baptist College. So she is the age of my daughter. And this is not any kind of daughter. This is a brilliant, pretty kind of daughter. I'm so happy, happy to welcome you to the show today. Um, how are you doing today? I'm doing very well, Auntie, and it's an honor. Thank you for, for having me on. All right. Um, the first time, well, I always knew you existed because I know your mother had you. <laughs> <laughs> but then the time when I first got to like know you, know you, was when I found out what you were doing, what you were specializing in, mm -hmm. and that completely blew my mind away because... I get a headache just from hearing anything to do with physics, with science, even arithmetic. I, can, <laughs> I, I, I will still use counting sticks if I could. So to hear that you're actually doing, first of all, just go ahead and tell people, what, what are you academically? Let's just get that on the, on the table. What are you academically? Yeah, for sure. Um, my background educationally is aerospace engineering. I have a PhD in aerospace engineering in which I focused on um, studying the, the fluid dynamics and the aerodynamics of supersonic flight, which means um, trying to understand how, if you wanted to design a plane to fly faster than the speed of sound, so, you know, really, really fast, how, what are the different things that you would take into mind to make sure that you're flying very efficiently? So that's, that's my background academically. Um, it's given me the opportunity to work in, in different places and explore a lot of very interesting work. And I'm happy to talk about, about it in more detail, but overall, that's that's my background. I hope my mouth is not still hanging open. <laughs> <laughs> even though I kind of know it and I've kind of heard it, I just hear space, aerospace. I'm afraid of heights. I pray like crazy before I even get on a plane, yeah. I trust the pilot. But to think that there's somebody who is has a, First of all, a first degree is something for a black woman. A master's degree is something. A PhD in anything is a huge deal. And then a PhD in aerospace engineering, I don't even just know um, <laughs> how to not be surprised every time I hear it. But you know, there's this whole STEM thing. You know, yes. it's, um, it's there and existing because we have a hard time getting girls, mm -hmm. women, to even go anywhere near this kind of uh, domain. For you, how was it? Did you always just know this is what you were good at? Uh, what cost of obstacles might you have met along the way? Yeah, so this is actually a very interesting story and I think it's one that you would like because it's, it's related to Seeker. <laughs> but basically all through my, you know, from one to from five, so middle, the equivalent of middle school in the US, I thought I would be a medical doctor. My father is a doctor, as you know. Yes. And all along, I thought, you know, this is a great way to spend life, is to just invest in people's lives by helping them and, and making them well when they're sick. But when I was in Form 5, I watched my dad do a surgery, and it was clear to me that I would definitely not be a doctor. <laughs> And then also, I think as I as I got into high school, my final two years of, of high school, I started to find that I had a natural aptitude for math and physics, much more so than biology necessarily. Mm -hmm. And I really just enjoyed it a bit more. So I started thinking about doing engineering instead of, of medicine. Mm -hmm. And in in high school, 1-11 February, there were this new day activities that they had in Limbe. Mm -hmm. I got the chance to go to one, which was kind of a career fair, right? So they told us about different career paths and things that people do. Yes. And one of the things that they discussed was aerospace engineering, and that picked my interest. So that's where the seed was planted for me. Uh -huh. I went home, looked it up, started to learn about it some more online. And then I told my parents that that's what I would, I would like to explore. Um, and so in the summer before my final year of high school, I started applying for colleges and ultimately ended up at Florida Institute of Technology, um, which so, I also- Just not to interrupt, not to cut you short, but I take it that they, they warmed up to the idea. They didn't say, oh, 
Oh, no, yeah, absolutely. So I'm trying, I'm trying, that's what I'm trying to go to point out to the fact that two things that I've noticed, yep. I've noted from hearing you say just this bit of your story. Yeah. The, the, the usefulness mm-hmm. of those little seminars and things that people have. When yeah. they put a flyer out and say this is happening somewhere, people just roll their eyes and like, mm-hmm. what's the big deal? Mm-hmm. It is a huge deal. Mm-hmm. Because absolutely. one person is doing what they're doing now because yeah. they went there and their interest was piqued. Yes. Second point, parents. Yeah. Because I know parents will tell their child, you want to go do what? No, <laughs> women don't do that kind of a thing. I yeah. bet just go be a teacher, go do this and so thing. And so yeah. it's amazing. I'll to note those two things. Because please yeah, don't absolutely. Worry. And it would be nice. I would love to build on, on those two also, right? Because to your first point, you can't be what you don't know. And you don't know what you don't know, right? Like our universe sometimes is kind of limited in what opportunities are available to us because there are only a few things that we know as career choices based on what we know. So right. I think that there's definitely... Um, a role for all of us to play to expose Mm -hmm. the people that come after us to what was out there just so that children are taking advantage of the things of their strengths and all the opportunities are available in the world now Mm -hmm. and then I would say to the point of parents I I owe all my success to my parents um very early on my mom was very invested in you know early child education and I think I, I tell people this all the time I became confident in my academics because I did well academically early on, right? Mm-hmm. I, you, when a child succeeds academically early on, you, you accept that as your place. I was the smart child because I was successful early on. And then at that point, you don't accept any less, right? You just accept that I'm, I belong here and that's, and that's what you strive for. So I think that's, that's an incredi- like something that I, I like to mention all the time. And it's, it's just a child. Very important. As it's I'm very important. Now. Yeah, absolutely. As I'm parenting now, also to to offer my child the same, you know, background and foundation that my parents did us. And then the second piece of that is just being willing to enable us to go after the things that we wanted to go after, making all the sacrifices financially, but also just having the foundation to believe that everything was possible. Mm -hmm. Um, There were no limits, right? I have only sisters. So even if they wanted to, there was just no way that they could. There was no way to do gender discrimination because yeah, yeah, they were all girls to start with. Yeah, so there were the I I I I didn't grow up with the perception that there were things that I couldn't do because I was a girl, and I think that that has enabled me to just soar um, yes, beyond the place. Beyond what you can have. relate. Yeah. We did have us an only brother, but he passed on quite early. So my dad mm-hmm. just had us three mm-hmm. girls. Mm-hmm. There was even when the brother was there, there was never anything he expected. Of him that he yeah. didn't expect of us. Yeah. Yep. It, it was just you breathe, you go to school. Yeah. Eat yeah. and you pee, school. Yeah. Like where you go. The, the first time you could get a break to say, okay, what am I doing from here on? Was like after I've gotten at least a first degree. And then he'd say, Do you want to go on? Or no, it's up to you. Yeah. But yeah. elementary school, you just went to the next class, then the next class, then the next one, and the next level of education, and then the next one. It was part of who you just were. Yeah. It took me a while to now realize that there are people who really sit there and say, um, this one will go to school. This one can just be at home. I'm like, for real? We, we don't know what a blessing it is till you get out there and see. That Absolutely. Yeah. I, I think in a lot of ways, I was kind of sheltered because what, as I've grown up and I've started to explore and meet people from different backgrounds, it's just a shock to me nice. to meet someone who, you know, these days everyone sends it, well, not everyone, but a lot of people send their kids to school. But then when it comes time to specializing or like going to college, there are certain things and career paths that are somewhat limited to men and like and once you inculcate that into children's minds, they can't dream freely. They don't leverage their strengths because somehow we've associated children's capacity with their gender, right. which just blows my mind. And I, it's something that I, I try to talk, talk about a lot because I, I think you know the outcome of these decisions that people make very early on literally determine the path that their children's lives take. They determine the path that our community as a whole takes, right? Because if you're you're limiting developing technology, leadership to health of the people in the community, yes. there is another 50% of your brightest minds, mm-hmm. of your smartest people that you're just leaving on the backseat because they're women. Exactly. And 
yeah, yeah. And imagine if, if, if God forbid, knock on wood, I don't know what else to do. Imagine if you're there, I said, no, 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 that's not for you. We will not be having you sitting here now yeah. talking. Yeah. And that's the reason why when you had that, when you graduated, my good, I still see the picture and I'm looking at those three stripes there. And I'm like, <laughs> Ooh, like we were, that just turned, and I was in a hurry to post that thing on Sacred Pride to say, see, it's been done. You two little girl over there eating that zizi, you can do it too. Yeah. You may not even necessarily do this aerospace engineering specifically, but something else. Stop saying, because I'm a woman, I'm a girl, I will do nursing, I will teach, and I will just be a housewife or no, and see who else is doing it. So I really, because you are pretty, you are what they call a trailblazer. <laughs> the time when you were graduating, if you don't mind, how old were you with the, with the PhD? How old were you? So I got my PhD, um, I was 26 when I defended the PhD. Yeah. Look at that. <laughs> and, and since then, just to go a little further, since then, you've gotten married mm -hmm. and you have a beautiful, beautiful baby girl. I do. You see, because that was the next thing I was going to. Book woman doesn't look like that. She <laughs> will not do anything. Don't wear earrings, just sit there and just be. That's why they say, don't go do some more. Actually, that's what they think. It's not feminine. Mm -hmm. You would look, you would not do, do, do so, and then you will go do them so. Who will want to marry you? Oh, they, people absolutely ask me that. Okay. People definitely ask me that. In fact, I talk about this too. Is when I decided to go and do my PhD after undergrad, I didn't tell people. Like when people ask me, What are you doing next? I'll just, I'm still trying to figure it out. But I knew what I was doing many, many months before graduation, right? But it's just because I didn't need all, I didn't want people to be telling me that. The bad vibes. Yeah, and I finally told one of my cousins, he was like, ah, bro, you'll go to PhD, you'll go marry you, exactly. you know? And, and I, oh my gosh. Like, like I was created <laughs> to be married, Yeah, number one. And then number two, I need to be attacking somebody, I don't want to say a loser, but a person who would be intimidated. By your success, yeah. But by by but being, you are, instead of supporting you and saying, wow, and being proud of you too. In so yeah. So that's debunking a whole you. You, this is <laughs> you are debunking a whole length of myths and things and those little barriers and glass ceilings and whatever ceilings we call them. Yeah. By being who you are, then that's why you're just precious to me. Thank you. I, I really appreciate that. that. Right. No, that's, that's yeah. just clean, the clean, clear truth. Yeah. So that my next question was going to be then, how are you juggling them all? Yeah. Mother and I'll you. answer your question, but before I go, I, I really like the point that you just brought up, right? I think there are a lot of these decisions that they have women or girl children make because the concern is, oh my gosh, if you go and do this, how are you going to raise your family? Who is going to marry you? Mm -hmm. And if we're being completely honest, we start telling girls these things when they're five years old, when oh, they're yes. 12 years old. Oh, yes. At that point in time, you don't even know if one, that child is going to get married. I mean, we all want, a lot of people do want to get married. So it's not that I'm hoping that they won't. But imagine making these choices for yourself and then ultimately not even actually getting married. Yes. Regardless, you have limited your life choices <laughs> because of someone that you have never met. That you don't even know. You never even met. Exactly, right? It's baffling. It is yeah. baffling, my dear. Yeah. And then to the second point, which is exactly what you made, why would you want to be with someone that limits you, that doesn't want you to be the best version of yourself? So my advice to younger women and to younger girls is always do the best that you can, become the best, best, best version of yourself exactly. and find the person that fits into that and that allows you to thrive and that allows you to, to continue to grow because <laughs> I can't just stress this enough, like, trying to be small so that you can fit into someone's oh, picture of what a woman oh, should Lord. be is limiting yourself and like will allow you to be depressed and cranky and angry for the rest of your life and it doesn't benefit anybody no. it doesn't benefit you it doesn't benefit the community that you belong to that needs your talent and deprived deprived and, of, of what you could have been exactly. for that community. and most importantly it doesn't benefit your children because the quality of life that you would have been able to offer them Mm -hmm. the amount of intelligence and brilliance that you would have allowed you would have role modeled for them is missing because you made the decision very early on or your parents made the decision very on very early on 
to just not allow you to be the best that you could be. And you're depriving a lot of other women who are looking up, who would have been looking up to you exactly. because these things that we do have a cascading effect. So I just wanted to hammer that in. Before oh, I no. Hammer it all you want. If I had a nail and a, 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 <laughs> a nail and hammer, go hammer it. And it is not, you're doing my, my work for me by just saying the things that I was hoping to get out of you. You're already saying them your own self. Yeah. You, you, I don't think people get the, the, the whole, the full picture. My belief is that everybody is sent to this planet for a purpose. Mm -hmm. So not only are you depriving, you are really daring God. Yeah. He sent this person here to come and be this thing. You are the one who has stood in their way and said, you will not be this thing. Mm -hmm. I believe you're going to answer one day mm -hmm. for this engineer that you, you, you prevented and made them be this cook, housewife. Not any, no offense to, to those things, but it does not what they were sent here to do. Why are you the one making them do? You see, they sent someone to come and find a cure for cancer. You now said, Oh, you're a girl, stay in the house. Who is going to solve cancer for us? You know, exactly. exactly. <laughs> Look at now, I know you've heard about you heard the thing. We were all listening. I'm so proud. The girl from uh, Chapel Hill, who yeah. was uh, um, very instrumental in the development of the Moderna vaccine. Yeah. She is here from this North Carolina, right by the back door here. Yeah. Imagine if her father had said, Go play. Yeah, yeah. Say it, and she had gone and done something else uh, there, then we don't have, if I look at, and COVID came, we needed that expertise That's to be able so to do that. Right. I am so proud. I am so proud uh, that you got the parents that you, you had who encouraged you instead. You got the husband that you've got who has no issues with it and you're just blossoming. So, so what, what in, is a day in the life of Mbu of an aerospace <laughs> engineer like? So, you know, the, one, the, the other piece of this is aerospace engineering as a career is actually pretty flexible, I would say, in terms of just lifestyle. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it wasn't something that I had concerns about balancing if you're working mm -hmm. in industry anyway. Mm -hmm. It's a regular nine to five job. Um, obviously, the transition into the job, like any other job, I think is is tough because you know you're you're learning a lot of things when you're starting a new job. In this case, technical work sometimes can be challenging because there's one right answer, right? It's not one of those things where you can just sit and make up stuff on the fly. It's a gray area there where huh, it can kind of work. <laughs> or the can kind of fly. The rocket can kind of yeah, go or not go. <laughs> so the stakes are high, and and we're always learning. Mm -hmm. um, but that said, I would say aerospace engineering is not one of those jobs where you're necessarily pulling 80 hour weeks in which or traveling a lot for the average engineer anyway. So from a, a, a life balancing perspective, I think it works out well for, for raising a family. Mm -hmm. um, I actually currently don't work in the aerospace industry directly. I now work for a global consulting firm and we have, we have a bunch of different clients, some of whom are aerospace um, companies and which is a space that I'm currently working in. Mm -hmm. So that itself is a more challenging and demanding job which involves travel and which is probably more in line with the question that you're asking. Right. Um, for someone who has, I have a one-year-old. Right. And I, and this job again is, it's a lot of work. I think the way that we've been able to manage it so far is by leveraging help, um, making use of the village. It takes a village to raise a child, um, leveraging help, and then just being intentional about the time that we do have, right? So I, I am one of those people that believes that, you know, we all were brought here for a purpose. Mm -hmm. That purpose is not limited necessarily to just your nuclear family. Yes. But the community that you're part of benefits from all the talents that you have. Mm -hmm. And so working outside the home is, is something that I prioritize as well as raising my child. Mm -hmm. And so I've been able to find ways to make it sustainable, which is one, having boundaries at work and just being clear to everyone that, mm -hmm. you know, I have a young child. She's the priority. I'm going to make the job work. Um, as much as I can, but you need to realize that these are the two things I'm balancing. And then also being clear at home what the work priorities are, what my travel schedule looks like when it becomes important and working around all of those to, to find the right balance. I think at the end of the day, I work for money, I use the money to pay for help, to help the house and then 
it allows the cycle to continue and, and we get support from that. Mm -hmm. I think the other important piece of this is just having a partner who is a partner and like who pulls right. his weight at home. We are, you form a team and we're in this together. We are going to find a way to make it work. Exactly. And mm -hmm. I think that none of this is, is possible without a partner who is a partner. Mm -hmm. um, or, or maybe it is possible. It's just a lot more painful. <laughs> right. If I, if I felt that, you know, running the house and managing the house was solely on my shoulders, mm -hmm. there are certain decisions that I would be more reluctant to take. I definitely would not have taken the job I currently have now, which has been good for us as a family. Mm -hmm. um, so I think, I think that for women or for young girls who are thinking about, you know, managing their careers and wanting to have like really successful careers that might involve a lot of work and that might not necessarily be the regular nine to five. Mm -hmm. It's really, really important to find someone who respects you as a person, right. who respects your talents and brilliance enough to do what he needs to or she needs to do to make sure that you're able to go to the lens and to, to, to go to the heights that your, your brain yes. is that you've been allowed afford you. Mm -hmm. um, I would say that when I think about work, I don't necessarily think about my family as a limiting factor for what I can do, right? Mm -hmm. It's a question of deciding whether or not I'm willing or we're willing to make the sacrifice as a family to go after the opportunity. It's not a question of, oh, if I go to the good shop, or oh, yes. it's, it, it, that, that is not part of the calculation um, because I'm confident that the system that we have in place runs and it works. Like, will work but then i was going to ask okay in your in your career now in the office say where you work i'm pretty sure there are not many women in it because if, if it's not a matter of just in africa in general as i teach i've been seeing it yeah do you notice any things that you are you're having to um teach people having to correct people and having to stand up for yourself um anything from not just that you're a woman, you're an African American woman, from your hair, your your presentation, to the fact that I'm saying you had the baby, I need to go, I'm breastfeeding, because all of those little things. Those are yeah. things that I'm just wondering. Have they had to go, hmm, we never had a woman before uh who did this kind of a thing. So now that we have one, maybe we should rethink our policy. How has that kind of worked? Yeah. I think there are two, there are two different experiences that I've had career-wise, right? So the job I had before now was traditional aerospace. There were very few women. In fact, the group I was part of was, I was the second woman that they'd ever hired, period, in the company. Um, and that's a company that, no, not in the company, in that group, but that's a company that had been around for a hundred years. And there's this analyst, analysis group that just- and I, and I bet that first woman was white. She was Asian. She yeah. was Asian. <laughs> yeah. Um, and and it's not it's not long ago. She was hired maybe two years before I, or the year before I was. So it's it's very recent that it's starting to have women in in that space. And I think in my current role, there are a lot more women, but there are very few women with children, right? Okay. So there there a lot of of women start out at the firm. And they start working in the early years, like at the, at the lower rungs. And then when it comes time for them to have kids, they just leave. Because it's very hard to balance a home and, a, and raising children with the kind of job that I'm in right now. Mm -hmm. And so I think what I've had to do has been to be very clear about the boundaries. I'm not, I'm not ashamed of just exposing everything that I have going on. Mm -hmm. There's a little bit of a vulnerability involved, which is there's still very much the culture ingrained that where it's like, oh, this person has a child. They won't be as dedicated to the job. I don't know if we should staff her. I don't know if she's the right person for this role. I don't know if she's the right person for this engagement. Um, subconsciously, because everybody is, is these days very much like pro women. Right. I think in practice, there's still a lot of things that are barriers for us. And so you as the person who has a child and who has the job still has a lot to, or a lot of work to do right. to make things happen, right? Because everybody has the right intention. It's, it's almost like you're trying to prove yourself to say it can be done. You're mm -hmm. like, I don't, I cannot, 
in a, in a small, I know how that kind of works in a smaller, much more minute version of when I started teaching at, at the first school I taught in when I got here. I was mm -hmm. the first African that they had ever seen in their mm -hmm. style. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. There were days when I had a headache. I really didn't feel good. But I was saying to myself, if I stay home now, they say, that's how Africans are. Uh, yeah. That's no, how that's it's very is. small. When you're the first, when you're the only in any space, that's just what happens. Yes. You, you feel like you carry the entire continent on your back. Correct. Uh, and so the I, I continent, guess, the gender, the race will be judged by your people. By you, by you. Mm -hmm. And I had a lot of that when I was in graduate school where, you know, in my department, we had very few women, period. Mm -hmm. um, no black people, period. Mm -hmm. And so I'm sitting there and I'm like, oh my gosh, I have to succeed. I can't right. fail. Because if I do, they're never going to hire another black woman here. You know, they're just going to be like, y'all don't know what you're doing. And I put so much pressure on myself I can that I think it actually started affecting my performance, right? Mm -hmm. So I've been in these spaces where I'm an only for long enough that at this point, I'm just like, I I need to be, I need to allow, give myself some grace. Right. Um, I've worked hard enough to make it to those places. Mm -hmm. I deserve to be in those spaces. You, and I have not believe to you do. <laughs> And I have nothing to prove to anyone, right? Yes. I think ultimately, if I'm in a place and I'm not thriving, it's not necessarily because I'm not performing well, it's just not a good fit, right? And there's so many other places that would have me and that would benefit from the skill set that I bring, that would benefit from the brilliance that I bring. And I it's think- It's a level of self-confidence that is so <laughs> refreshing to hear. Because you have to tell some other people, come on, boo. No, you can do it. No, that's like you, 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 you own your brilliance. That is you. You own yourself. And that is important for people to just hear. But no, you're really it, different. It is important for me to even survive. Because if imagine if for the last 10 years, mm -hmm. I was just like, oh my gosh, I'm so grateful to be here. Oh my gosh, I can't make a mistake. That's a lot of pressure. And there's no way that I would succeed if I kept thinking like that, right? So mm -hmm. I had to to like switch my brain and be like, you know what? It's great that I'm here. I'm benefiting a lot from being here. It's definitely a privilege to be in the spaces that I am in, mm -hmm. but I also contribute something. It's not charity. I'm not, they, they're not sorry for me. They didn't no, bring me- No, you're earning every there. dime. <laughs> or oh, let me hold, let me help this small girl. No, I also no. provide value. Right. And so if if it's not working, I will find somewhere else where it's working. Exactly. And, be, and they'd be grateful. They'd be grateful to have you. Yeah. They'd, they'd be blessed and honored <laughs> and privileged to have you. As opposed to just saying, can you manage me? Can you patch me in? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> and that is a mindset that I'm hoping people are listening and they're going to do that shift. You yeah. know very well who you are what you're worth, and you don't sell yourself short, apologizing yeah. for this and apologizing for, for that, uh, and, and, and owning and realizing, like you say, that I deserve to be here and I've earned it the same as anybody else in that, in that, in that job, a, a Caucasian male. Sometimes you even, you even deserve to be there more than some. Sometimes you well, do. Sometimes that's even the case. So you don't yeah. want to sell yourself uh, short. Yeah. I know. I uh, go on, go on, dear. No, I was saying, and, and, and I think that, that that change in mindset would be helpful for a lot of us who are not the traditional person in those spaces, right? Just because if you, if you have that pressure off your back, it helps you perform better. I started that to excel. do so much better it, when it, I told myself. It liberates you. It does. To now go ahead and excel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah rather than spending all your time, oh my gosh, I need to get this project done on time. Otherwise I'll be the only one that hasn't gotten it done. And everybody else will be like, oh, this girl just is here because of affirmative action, right. you know? So right. I think, yeah. It that just, is a very irritating statement to think. Look, there's, there's so much, there's so much. She's here because of affirmative action. I am whooping your derriers in class. Yes. The person is showing you wonders, right? They have to say, I'm here because of action, the person is brilliant, period. That's yeah. it. Yeah. And it does, I think about the days when even authors had to write books and put a pen name that is a man's name because they don't expect it to come. People just knew. Some people read the books and thought it was awesome. 
Mm-hmm. They, that, when they did not know it actually was a woman who wrote the book. So the book, so the quality is there, it's perfect. Mm-hmm. The problem is once you see the person who's done it, then you start now to have the biases, it's just a terrible stereotypes, biases, they are doing such a negative, having such a negative effect on, right. on at so many levels. It's it's mm-hmm. just uh, mm-hmm. sometimes beautiful to see. So what do you what do you see as you as your future? What do you uh, plan on doing? Is this way this, the, the current job you're doing? Is that what you want to keep doing? Are you because I cannot imagine that there's higher than this. I can <laughs> I cannot imagine that this for me you've already just reached it. The ladder has already just reached. I don't know that there are any ceilings that you, you sit and say to yourself, I need to still do this. Like what? There's there's always higher, right? I think right now when I think about the future, I think mm-hmm. about being in a position to more effectively influence change. Uh-huh. Um and it's it's part of the reason that I left my job in the traditional aerospace engineering environment and went into doing consulting where you know you're talking to the leaders of the industry you're talking to the leaders of the company mm-hmm. and providing guidance in some cases in other cases just showing them the data and allowing them to make choices for themselves mm-hmm. but basically kind of shaping the strategy for their companies for um governments and other organizations going forward so I'm, I'm hoping to get the chance to do a lot more of that work where you know i'm working with leaders and trying to inf- and having more influence at that level so what that you, 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 just just not to interrupt you but i this thing it's recording yes it is mm-hmm. I, it need, is. I will take this and i will play it to my students so they can hear <laughs> it's telling them see we, we, they, there's going to be a little demonstration or a little march in the court here can, then they say it's up to the discretion of the teacher to let the students go or not go. And I'm mm-hmm. like, oh, definitely go. When they go and the 15 minutes are over and they put all the little signs and little things, they be, and they come back into the classroom and I'm like, okay, now let's talk. <laughs> the stuff you went and did out there, kudos. Great. You need to do some of these things, express yourself. I said, but you, have you looked at the grade book recently? Have you seen your grade mm-hmm. in this class? Have you, when is the last time you actually look? And I'm saying, that is one thing. Do you know how you're going to get things to really change, change? By getting into, we know we want to fix things and that the, 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 the playing field is not really level right now, but we need more people in those places mm-hmm. where the decisions are being made. Mm-hmm. Where, like you're saying, you are effecting change from mm-hmm. within. Mm-hmm. We need people there. That's why you need to do, take care of your academics, climb. Climb, climb. <laughs> get to those places and change the things from within. Because in a place like wh- where you're working, if you see you're the first woman there, first African American woman, and you show up with this braids, you're like, mm. then you say, mm, like what? <laughs> this is my hair. This is what we do. You see, <laughs> then then those policies start to change. They start okay. to finally because some people that are not necessarily anti anything. They don't even know what they're anti. They don't right. even know what it is. To, yeah. to, to start with, and they have some funny policies. And you're good. It only takes a woman, or an African American woman, there to sit and say, No, we, we can't be doing this. We can't be having this kind of policy. This is how it affects somebody yeah. like me. Yeah. And I, I, I agreed. Um, it's, it's really important for us to be in those rooms, I think, because, you know, just thinking about some of the work that I've done so far, there are absolutely things that the decisions that are made with to your point, nobody is trying to be intentionally discriminatory, mm-hmm. but these systems have been in place so long that they're, they're just discriminatory by default. By themselves. By design, That's right? right. And so it, it takes intentional effort. It takes intentional thinking, intentional strategy to say, let's do it this other way to make sure that it's equitable. Mm-hmm. Because if we do it without actually thinking about discrimination, like thinking about it through a bias lens, by default it's unequal right, right? so I, I think there's there's a place for you know your students going out and making their voice heard because important. that's that's where the, they push the people that have the power to make the policy mm-hmm. otherwise the people in power are just going to because the we'll people in power are not, they are not us mm-hmm. to be fair um and so that's what pushes them to make the changes and then mm-hmm. there's there's room for us to do what is within our power 
to try to get to those places. Because I, I very much believe that there are two pieces of this, right? One is acknowledging the problem and giving responsibility to whoever caused the problem, but then also accepting that, honestly, at the end of the day, a lot of our issues are going to be fixed by us, even though they were not caused by us, because we care about them the most, they're affecting us the most. And it's up to us at the end of the day. It Unfortunately, is. it shouldn't be, but at the end of the day, based on the historical track, it's up to us to fix them. And and so, yeah, we, we do what it takes. Unfortunately, it's really hard and we have to work twice as hard to get to those places. And it's uncomfortable when you're in those places because you can't right. even relax when you get there. Right. Um, but I think the work is, is important enough that Very those of us who have the ability and who've had the opportunity to get to those places just need to to do what it takes to, to make it and it's a, it's at every level at your level even it's even higher but at every level because as i was telling you as a teacher i, I was called in once mm -hmm. to go and they had this iq test mm -hmm. the, for for kids that were not um special needs mm -hmm. kind of so you have i had this special needs kid on top of, of which they were also immigrants so they're coming mm -hmm. there and the, they're trying to place them where they should be uh, by seeing, assessing their intelligence and everything. So they said, come and you just serve as the translator, the interpreter, let them know what it is that they're asking them so we can now gauge where they should be. And we're going on with the things they look at. Then a question comes up and they're asking about um, baseball. And I'm sitting there going, okay, wait, yeah, this child is blue for baseball. Soccer, yes, but baseball. So no, no, no. This question is, are you going to assess the intelligence based on what question they can exactly. answer? I don't even understand the rules of baseball my own self. Three strikes, you're out. I'm like, mm -hmm. I don't know. Mm -hmm. So don't ask. They came another question about the prom. I'm like, we don't do proms. So we come like, yes. Another one now was about the, it had to do with the, uh, the basement. And I was telling this person, mm -hmm. I, I, when I asked the child about the basement, she said, is the person dead? Because I was trying to explain that it's on the ground. <laughs> And so <laughs> the person that I said, this is a very smart kid who has asked a very logical question. question yeah. So see, that thing they gave me to come and it, I was supposed to sit and just translate. Mm -hmm. And if the child gets the answer right, okay, doesn't get it right, okay. Mm -hmm. But it gets to a time and I said, time out, time out. Yeah. This test you're giving. It's so not said, finally, you look at the test and read out the questions that are not that are culturally sensitive, that the kid is not going to look on today to tomorrow. What you're talking about? Yeah. You see, so at any level, I hope you are listening. Yeah. Don't go wherever it is that you are. There is clearly an opportunity there for you to change the narrative, for mm -hmm. you to change the perspective. Mm -hmm. And so, and I'm so proud of you for doing that in a field that is predominantly male. Yeah. yeah. There, there can't be too many like 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 you out there. So I'm just curious. If your little daughter she's one, she came and said she wanted to be like follow in her mother's footsteps right down to career, you'd be good with it, I'm assuming. <laughs> I can't answer that question. <laughs> yeah. There are some issues with the career path that I've picked that I, I am conflicted about and that I think about a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I don't, I. Obviously, I would support whatever she wanted to do with her life. If, it, if uh -huh. she chose to do aerospace engineering, that's great. Um, but there's some. You're not, you're not likely to say, "Here you go. There's this book. Read this book about so And go do aerospace. No, I'm not. I'm not going to push her one way or the other. Uh -huh. Be open to whatever she chooses to do. Oh. Uh, I think engineering in general is it's a super interesting area of work. It teaches you how things work. It allows you to just think. Um, outside the box, mm -hmm. which is something that you can leverage in every work of life, right? I think engineers, the engineering foundation, just to illustrate the point, is one of those where you know how like all these professional schools need you to have a degree before you, you go do something. All of them would be happy to get someone that has an engineering background, right? Because mm -hmm. engineering allows you to think critically mm -hmm. uh, and to find a path to a the solution to a problem that is not necessarily um, intuitive. And right. so I think, I think that just the, the skill set is super useful regardless of, of what she chooses to do. If she wanted to be an engineer, I'm all for it. 
Yes, so it gets your brain to work. And when I hear that, I'm sometimes a little nervous because I look at the kids that we are that are going through our hands in high school, and I'm thinking that is mostly the thing able to think outside the box, able to think outside the box. And I find myself writing recommendations that I have noticed. They ask me, what is specific about this student that makes you want to recommend them this highly? And that's critical thinking skills, mm -hmm. able to think outside the box. Mm -hmm. Because it, why is that such a big thing? You don't see it that much anymore. Multiple choice, you see, I, you know, I came here, you know, where, how we grew up, multiple choice, mm -mm, you think about the answer, write your own answer, your own self, you know, mm -hmm. come up with it, your own self, as opposed to me, C, yeah. E, A, and I'm not sure you even really know the material. And sometimes what we do inadvertently is dumb the kids, dumb them down, mm -hmm. like not expecting much enough for them and challenging them to think, because it's amazing how much they will and can think. Yeah, if, if, if you they have to, yeah. You see, yeah. so not to go to the olden days where you have to say two times one is two, two times three is blah, 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 and that kind of a road. <laughs> yeah. But you find a kid, you give them the same thing. What would you do? And they're like, hmm, I haven't thought about that. And Thank so you. for every kid that you see that is also limited like that, you do see the brilliant ones. So I'm like, how about we do this? What would happen? The ones who raise that and question, like two weeks ago, didn't you say, we don't pronounce the final consonant of every French word. Didn't you just now say fils? F-I-L-S, and you're now pronouncing the S. What's going on there? And I want to hug them. I'm like, come here, baby, let me hug you. <laughs> For even noticing yeah. that there's something different there and, and, and acting. It is a skill um, as, as, um, a skill set that we want to encourage our kids. Because now what's happening is we teach them syllables. Mm -hmm. the, yes, school year starts here, it ends here. You need to know this specific number of things. A kid raises and asks a question. They're like, no, dear. Mm -mm. We have only three days left <laughs> on, on this, this thing. On this topic, and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Yes. And it makes me sad to see that. So I hope we're going to be able to balance mm -hmm. what you're talking about there, being able to think outside the box to give them a problem. Like, how are you going to handle this? Yeah. Especially in a field like yours, which is so exact. Yeah. You see, it's not an iffy thing, like you said, maybe this or maybe that. Yeah. I don't even know for how long we've been chatting here. I could just talk to you all day and be, fasc and be fascinated. But I would like to say, what advice do you have now for, imagine you were talking to this little girl in class four, in primary school, class five, mm. class six. What would you go if you had to, 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 to go talk to them? What would you say? Yeah, I think I think the big thing is, is excellence, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I'm one of those people that believes that it doesn't matter what you do as long as you do it well. Right. There's so many paths to getting to where you want to get to. There's so many paths to getting even to the same place. Mm -hmm. The one thing that you have to do is distinguish yourself, set yourself right. apart and stand out. And once you establish that early on, that's how you function. Nothing else is good enough. Once you set the standard for yourself, that's that's where you're going to hold yourself. That's the standard that you're going to hold yourself to. And you just won't let yourself drop the bar. Mm -hmm. So my thing is always work hard early, set excellence as a standard. Regardless of where we go in this world, we have to work twice as hard to be successful. If you're in Cameroon, you have to work twice as hard as the average child in America because the resources just aren't there. Limited you. If you're in America, you have to work twice as hard because you're not the default. And because people expect you, they don't expect that much from you. Um, and so I think just based on who we are, we need to set each of us, set the standard for yourself to not accept anything less than excellence. Right. And then the next piece is just around, you know, to the point that you were making early on, questioning everything, right? develop critical thinking because that allows you to do everything. Mm -hmm. um, you can start out in one place, but if you're the kind of person that thinks about how things work and why things are the way they are, you can leverage that skill set in everything, right? You can do engineering, you can beca become the kind of person that designs bridges, designs roads, designs planes, designs spacecrafts, or you can be the kind of person that decides what policy is going to be for all of us. You can be the person that decides that I don't know why America functions in the way that it does where women are, um, women have to, you go to a restaurant, you see a woman who is nine months pregnant, she's working. 
yeah. you would be the person that would come in there and pull all the numbers and show everyone that we can afford to give maternity leave to all the people, to all the women that ha are pregnant in this country, because this is what the numbers show. Right. And you would have the skill set to be able to talk to people and convince them of that based on data. Mm -hmm. You can become the person that, I, and just from critical thinking, I'm just trying to say that it, it expands, right? You can be the person that becomes the advisor to, or the chief of staff to the next president, or become the next president yourself, because you're able yes. to think about problems that we haven't seen before. And just and figure out to solve them. Mm -hmm. exactly. Apart from the problem to the solution, in the middle of the problem and the solution is all this mush. How do we distinctively pull out what is important, and then go and figure out how to solve these different things? But I think, yeah, I think those are the two things: are hold yourself to the standard of excellence, and then secondly, just question things and develop excellent critical thinking skills. Um, the last piece would just be our own confidence, right? I, we don't have to be like any particular person. Who you are is enough. If you find yourself in a room, trust me, you deserve to be in there. You've worked hard. <clears throat> you have the talent and the skills and the brilliance, much as everybody else in the room that you're in does. Right, right. And as we keep, as you keep going from one level to the next, you're going to keep questioning that because obviously, when you get to the next room, they're just it's so new. Many people, yeah. Um, and you have to reassure yourself every single time, but. I think it's really important for us to do that so that we're not just succeeding, but we're thriving, right? It's, it's right. one thing to be successful. It's one thing to be successful, but always under stress. And always, oh my God, it's today the day that this all falls apart, or today the day and that it's There's nothing wrong with having that little bit of butterflies in your stomach kind of a thing, mm -hmm. but being equipped to overcome it. Yeah, yeah. I've been teaching for what, centuries. Mm -hmm. But the, the thing is, every at the beginning of every school year, I'm like, mm -hmm. Yeah. It's normal. So don't, don't mistake that for yeah. something which is, yes, it's normal yeah. if you're a little nervous. Yeah. Yeah. Don't let it get you down. Yeah. yeah. But I'm referring to this debilitating questioning every day that you wake up from sleep and I just, oh and my God. You deserve to be here. Answers, yeah. yes, you do. Yeah. yeah. You're a human being. You deserve to. This planet is not somebody else's. That isn't yours. Yeah. So you deserve to be there. It has been such a pleasure to talk to you. I'd like, I could have you here every day. <laughs> so thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Is there anything we should know? Any programs you run or a part of that help girls? Yeah, um, I started a computer programming class in in Baker a few years ago, actually 2015, so six years ago now. Wow. Um, because of of all the like on and off in school, it hasn't been it hadn't been functioning fluidly, but we're trying to kick start it again this September. So. I'll definitely keep everyone posted and, and please let me know. I would make okay. a big old noise about it. People, <laughs> there's people there, and even sometimes it may even mean advocating for these girls to mm -hmm. their parents who are saying no. It has yeah. taken that sometimes. Yeah. Somebody needs to go to tell them, say, si pa, si ma, this thing you think your daughter should not be doing, she can, and mm -hmm. she can do it and do it well. And then you yourself are a living, breathing example. Yeah. The okay. fact that it can be done and has been done and done successfully. They do get married, they do have, <laughs> they do have children, they do just be there. Yeah. You, don't, you don't walk into a car and say, hmm, look at that one looking odd there. That's the aerospace engineer. You look <laughs> like any other Regular. pretty well-adjusted woman. You have a beautiful daughter, a wonderful husband. So it's possible to yeah. have that background and still be the woman that you want to be and be comfortable with it and, be, and do, well, one doesn't have to be sacrificed for the other. It's what people usually think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, the rest of, of society needs to just change for those two people to not think that one is at the expense of the other, right? Like men have both all the time. Right. Men have high raising careers and four children. Mm -hmm. But for us, it's a whole thing. So we need we need to definitely start questioning all of those at a higher level and just start to fix a, a society in a way that. And you, you would have noticed people, people are generally scared of what is new. Mm -hmm. They haven't even taken the time to think and say, how would it hurt? If mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going to go here, okay, now, it's a, it's a funny thing to see sometimes they are just, they are just when that happens. When the average African man sometimes comes out here, 
you know, he okay, going to the grocery store is equivalent of going to the market. In Kauru. Yeah. Which African man have you seen in the market in in the Bopi? <laughs> Shopping. And try to buy jama jama. Yeah. But you come here, you cannot do that. You're going to sit there and send me to the grocery store. You're going to start. Oh God, you're going to have to go to <laughs> and go do the some of the grocery shopping. They are just you. You, you come to Cameroon. Who is babying a child on the back or carrying? Here you are with that carry. So and what has it done to you? Has it changed the man you are? No, it hasn't. Going to anything, the it store. improves the relationship that they have with their children, right? The world is changing. I'm not going to finish this show. I'm not mm-hmm. going to finish this talk. I'm like, I don't know what you're saying. You see, that's what happens to some of the other people, to the average African man. When he returns from his job that he has been busy, busy, busy doing, and you're sitting there, the children have no relationship. Yeah. The total stranger was just there, and you're doing, sir, sir. Yes, and the, all he did was pay fees. Yeah. Then they don't have any relationship with the child, and then the child is out here now saying, "Mommy, come for vacation." Mommy, come. they're not asking your papa to come for vacation. Yeah. They don't. They don't. They don't. There's no relationship, and they don't understand yeah. that. Yeah. 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 That sometimes these little things you are saying is now woman work, which sometimes yeah. is our fault too as women. We raise our sons that way yeah. to say that's yeah. the thing that only women do, yeah. and mm-hmm. then now they don't want to do it. And whereas it allows you to bond, the kids are watching. It is such a pleasure to talk to you because you are wise. You're not just intelligent, <laughs> like smart, smart. You're wise too and very mature. Thank you. Well, yes. I wish I could clone quite a few of you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's always refreshing to talk to you, Mbu. And thank you for being on the show. You will be back because I know we haven't exhausted everything. But as I told you, I'm recording this and I will take it with me and play mm-hmm. it for my students to listen to, the girls in particular, because some of them come with zero expectations for themselves. Mm. You start asking them, why are you going to college? This is yeah, in the yeah, junior, where do you plan on going to college? I'm not going up till now, 21st mm. century. Mm. I don't plan on going. Why? <clears throat> My parents are, have, cannot afford it. Have you tried for scholarships? No. You see, so, so certain things, sometimes it's, 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 it can be almost disheartening. Mm-hmm. And then you remember why you're there in the first place. So that's, it's for me to say, oh no. Yeah, scholarships. Have you talked mm-hmm. to this in the guidance office? Have you explored this thing? Have you done this thing? So for some of us, that's why you're where you are. Absolutely. To try to tell somebody it can be done. It yeah. can be done. And it helps when we have a living, breathing person standing there who has done it. Because you can be telling them, mm-hmm, there's somebody for us, Caminians, you can see there was this Asian girl. They're like, ah, you said she's Asian. She there does. was this occasion. Mm-hmm. Yes. But when I can tell you that there's this Cameroonian girl raised, born and raised in Douala, who went to Sika, who is an aerospace engineer, then they go, okay, let me listen. Yeah. So there's the importance of being, the importance of being you is really, is really, is really important. It's really great. So thank you, thank you, thank you for taking the time to come and just chat with me here. And I definitely want to have you back, maybe on a, a, on a panel one day with some young girls. And so they can, they can ask you the questions that they have. And uh, we can make sure that they get to the places where they reach their highest potential because mm-hmm. they deserve mm-hmm. no less. No, thank you. It's, it's been a pleasure on my end as well. And it's, it's always an honor to talk to younger women. Definitely pull me in whenever and wherever you need me thank to you. be. Young. And thank I'll be you. listening out for that, the, the, the project you plan to do for the, in September. And yeah. I know it is going to, it's going to be very helpful. There's somebody out there, just think about it. So there's a little girl out there who, who's just waiting. Mm-hmm. The same way somebody did for you, you went to that little seminar yeah. thing and yeah. they said something and bam, look at you. Yeah. So there's some little girl out there, two, yeah. three of them, four little <laughs> girls sitting there who are waiting to hear that it's doable and can be done, who, yeah. whose, whose future you will be changing. So thank yeah. you for, for being you. My pleasure. Okay, give a, give my little girl a hug and tell your husband we are proud of our Amuyu. All right, you take care, dear. You too. All right, bye for now. Bye.